Today I'm going to show you how to repair starting issues in your single cylinder Briggs & Stratton engine in your lawn tractor. Now this video is especially for the tractors with the overhead valve engines. So it's a Briggs & Stratton 14.5 horsepower overhead valve engine. What often happens with these engines is after a while people go to start them and this is what happens. Just barely wants to go. Now I've got a fully charged battery. I've even tried a second battery and it's on a charger as well and it still does the same thing. The solenoid's just been replaced because it was fried, it overheated probably because the customer kept the key on too long and it fried that. So I replaced the solenoid which is here. Still have the same problem. Now at this point people would think well I better replace the starter and I've seen people do that and only end up with the same problem again. Now what happens on these engines is because it's overhead valve, you can see by the cover over here at the front, it's not just a flat head like the older ones. What's happening in this case is that the valves haven't been adjusted since the guy bought it brand new, so I'd say about 15 years or more. And as part of regular maintenance, they do need to be adjusted. What's happened is the valves have gotten out of adjustment, therefore not releasing the compression in the engine when it should. So the valves aren't opening when they should, thus creating too much compression inside the cylinder chamber and making it almost impossible to turn over the engine. Now this is the last option remedy that I'm doing. So first of all, to make sure your starter is good, just remove the plug right out of the engine and it's going to be easier to turn over and you'll know the starter is still good. So I've got the spark plug out now and I'm going to turn the key over to make sure the starter is still good. So once you've done this, you know that the starter is still good. You know for sure you don't need to replace the starter or the battery at this point. So now what we're going to do is take off the front end of the tractor so that we can access the valve cover in the front better. So I'm going to start by removing the bolt over here. There's one on the other side over there. And there's one over here that needs to be removed and the same on the other side over there. The two bolts on the side of the tractor are 3 8 So now that we've got the hood off, we're going to remove the valve cover by removing the four bolts here. Before you get started, you may want to put a rag under there and a piece of cardboard because when you take the cover off, some oil is going to come out. So there are the valves and the arms that open them and shut them. They're already loose at a first glance like this. Sometimes they can get so loose that the push rods can actually come out of the groove here and your engine won't run anymore. So now what we need to do is to turn the engine here by hand until the piston is at top dead center on the compression stroke, which means both valves are going to be shut. Now the way I do this without having to remove anything else is I grab a thin screwdriver insert it in the spark plug hole so that I can feel the top of the piston. Make sure you don't jam the screwdriver when you turn a motor by hand. Now what I do with one hand is I turn the motor with the screwdriver. Now you're going to notice that the screwdriver is going to follow the path of the piston. It's going to go down. As you can see, and it's going to slowly come up. As the piston comes back up and I'm turning it, but make sure you don't get the screwdriver jammed in there. You kind of got to know the feel of the piston as you're doing this. Now you can tell that the piston is on the stroke where the valves are opening because you can see it's not even, it's moving as you can see there. So now I'm going to do one more revolution of the motor. And what you want is both valves to be up like this. So what's going to happen here is when you move the piston and it's almost at top dead center on the compression stroke, 
is you're going to see that the screwdriver is going to even out. It's not going to go up or down, then you know you're at top dead center. And now you're going to notice that both valves are shut. So you can see the slack in the rocker arms. And they're right at top dead center because the valves are shut and there's no more pressure on the rocker arms from the push rods inside the engine. Now the manual says that once you've got it right at top dead center, it says to turn the engine a quarter inch of a turn and then start to adjust the valves. The valves on this engine are supposed to be set at three to five thousandths of an inch, but they've gotten so loose that I can fit a ten thousandth feeler gauge blade in there. So it's really off. 